Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Medical Tuesday and since it's also Women's Month, we've decided to put the spotlight on an issue all women have to deal with. And that's meant, no, we're not pausing there, but it's menopause. And Dr. Darren Green is joining us for that chat. But if you've got a comment or a question, we'd love to hear from you. Our lines are open. It's 21 4309 Great to always have you with us, Dr. Darren Green. How are you doing this morning? Fantastic, my man. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Excellent. So let, let's start first by medically defining menopause how is it defined yeah in simple terms it's mm. the period in which a woman goes from being fertile to infertile okay. her ability mm -hmm. to become pregnant and house a pregnancy or maintain a pregnancy is lost and obviously that happens under the direction physiologically of certain hormones uh, and what happens is naturally with aging the natural physiological process is that there's a decrease of certain reproductive hormones as we progress and approach the the 40s mm -hmm. uh, and by the, so everyone associates that as a landmark of I can't have menopause before 40 but normally after 40 45 to 55 that's where it's at and uh, the associated systemic symptoms which I'm sure we'll get into also come with that is there any way to bypass menopause because I mean do women who have hysterectomies still go through that yeah everybody goes through menopause but not everyone experiences symptoms the same Women's sensitivity to changes in the, and fluctuations in estrogen level uh, differ. A simple example of that is if you take women on the oral contraceptive pill, for example, so many of them that are taking an estrogen alone pill can get sick and nauseous and so forth, just with the slightest dose. Others are on the lowest possible dose mm -hmm. and they feel unwell or the sensitivities of that fluctuation hormone so quickly. So not everyone experiences menopause in the same way, yeah. but everyone has to go through that period of, of going through a period of you know being fertile to infertile yeah. and the hormone fluctuations or post-surgically, as you said, with removing the, the, uh, the uterus during a hysterectomy with or without the, the ovaries being uh, also taken out. Yeah. A quick reminder that our lines are open 021-430-9881. Give us a call with your questions or comments. So how will a woman know that she is going through it or beginning to go through it and how long does it usually last? Yeah, so a lot of uh, people in the old days used to speak about a change of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what our grannies will tell you. They'll tell you that they became aware of certain things changing. The big one being hot flashes. Okay. So suddenly you'll find that you feel like you're combusting internally and feel that your temperature is like 45 oh. degrees mm. from nowhere. So you'll be absolutely fine. And while you're having dinner with your family, suddenly this hot flush will, will, will come on. Mm -hmm. You also have associated with that, due to the withdrawal of certain estrogens, drying of the skin. So you get drying of the skin throughout, but specifically at the sensitive uh, genital areas as well, the skin can become dry and chapped and lead to more UTIs, for example. Uh, urinary incontinence can become more as well with a decreased estrogen. And then, of course, you have the mood swings and the real, real low mood. You find depression and anxiety getting worse uh, or can it rear its head for the first time during menopause. Headaches are also another very big uh, symptom. And, of course, right at the top of the list, I should have mentioned insomnia. Okay. Uh, and a simple thing like the hormone imbalance or the, you know, the change in the hormone environment can lead to those symptoms. So not a pleasant thing. And a lot of women also experience then with the hormone cycles changing, weight gain. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all over, the, I mean, the experience psychologically is a really, really draining and tough one on a lady. Okay, well, we're going to unpack this topic a little bit more with Dr. Darren Green. But if you've got a comment or a question for Dr., our lines are open. Feel free to call us. That number is 021 We'll be back shortly. It's my feel good breakfast show. All right, we're back again with Dr. Darren Green discussing a uh, very important women's health issue. Of course, it is Women's Month, and uh, we are focusing on that this morning. That's right. Well, Dr. Darren Green, earlier you said, you know, the age span in which menopause yes. can start, but how long does it last for? Yeah, so if the onset's, uh, typically it's between 45 and 55. Mm -hmm. But you do get things called early menopause, which can even happen as, as young as your 30s, or post-surgically, as we spoke about early on, where you have a hysterectomy plus an ophorectomy, where you take out the ovaries and the hormones are then not produced, basically, by the ovaries. So uh, you'd, you'd look then, for example, for the average age of about 50. But once the, the menstruation has stopped, because that's going from a fertile to an infertile phase, so your menses start becoming irregular and then more sparse, and then they disappear. So after you've had your last uh, menstrual cycle, it can last up to four years even after that. 
the symptoms okay. of the estrogen withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So if you start, take the onset at, at about 45 and it can only end at, at 60, some people are unlucky with the symptoms if they go untreated all the way to the age of 60. Yeah. So depending on your ability to identify symptoms early, seek treatment, or uh, as I say, genetically as well, you, you, you sometimes find people have shortened or lengthened cycles. Yeah. Okay. We've got our first caller on oh, the good. line, Mr. Green, giving us a call on 0214309881. Good morning, Mr. Green. Good morning. Thank you very much for your call. What is your question or comment? Okay, my question is just, man, um, my wife is like in first, over 50 years. And actually, um, we were quite active. But now, lately, when I touch her or ever, something like that, she just ignore me. So, and even I, with my friends or something like that, she just ignore me. And I just want to know what I can do from my side mm. or, or she can do from her side just to bring that feeling back to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much for that question, Dr. Green. I don't know if you'd like to yeah. weigh in on that. Um, she's over 50. She's yeah, over 50. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's speaking specifically about uh, low energy levels, and they were very active together. He's also speaking about, I think, reading between the lines, a bit about your sexual desire and libido, mm -hmm. your sexual drive. Mm -hmm. That is also known to decrease under the influence of decreasing estrogen. Yes. The effects of a decreased libido, I think we've done on a previous show, if they want to refer to a video of that as well. Mm. But looking at specifically the effects of estrogen lowering, but also testosterone, also uh, women have testosterone, which drives a lot of the libido. And then obviously a lot of psychological stress is a major role player at that age particularly. If you imagine feeling bloated, swollen, itchy, dry, headaches, hot flushes, you don't feel that's the last thing on your mind. Mm -hmm. Ask anyone that's going through menopause. So I think as a partner, you need to firstly just open that conversation, put it on the table and, and start talking about it. And I think... Being understanding and relating and talking to your partner about menopause and the realities of it, mm -hmm. listen to understand. Don't listen to correct and snap them out of it quickly. Mm. I think that's what we as males need to do as well. Okay. Well, I Good certainly advice. have a follow-up question which we'll tackle with Dr. Darren Green, but our lines are open. Mr. Green, thank you for that phone call, but we'd love thank to you. hear from you too if you've got a comment or a question. That number is 021-4309-881. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is Women's Month and we're putting the spotlight on women's health this morning. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on menopause, something all women go through. And our lines are open. That number is 21 If you've got a comment or a question for Dr. Darren Green. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Earlier, we had Mr. Green call us regarding his wife and he's noticed the changes and you encouraged him to have a conversation with her. Open but up. is this a case of... You just now accept it for what it is, or is it something as simple as just getting the necessary hormone supplements? 100%. So when it comes to adjusting to the symptoms, remember, they're not going to reverse overnight. It's yeah. a process of, of getting used to lower estrogen over a period of years that actually occurs. So the, dif the different symptoms are going to respond at different rates to treatment. Mm -hmm. The hot flashes, the dry skin, there's topical stuff you can use, for example. When it comes to drive and sex drive specifically, Remember that uh, there's such a strong uh, psycho psychological part of this journey. So depending on where his wife is psychologically, depending on where the relationship is, the dynamics between them combined with the physiology, it could take time to have that spontaneous return of a natural, natural drive. So mm -hmm. I think important to understand it's multifaceted and it's not going to reverse overnight. Okay. Uh, but your best chance at rekindling all those, those kind of passions are going to be by you listening, understanding, going with your wife to, uh, to speak to the clinician. Know what to expect during the period of menopause and then mm -hmm. adjust, obviously, starting off with things like, obviously, exercise because that uh, increases other feel-good hormones mm -hmm. and helps get the circulation going. So just not being sedentary and moving and then, obviously, with sleep being a major issue in menopause. You can imagine. Can help your wife get some sleep uh, where you can uh, as well. It'll make a difference in her mood and her energy levels. Yeah. We have another caller on the line, Julie, joining us right now. Uh, good morning, Julie. Good morning. Thanks so much for your call. What is your comment or question? Good morning, Doctor. I good would morning. like to know, I had a hysterectomy about 40 years ago. I am now 70 years old yes. and I still have hot flashes. Is that normal? And I do, I'm on Premarin. 
Good. Okay. Thank you so much for Good. that. Good. So she mentions she, she's post postmenopausal per definition. So she's actually gone through the menopause, but the symptoms of hot flushes have continued quite a few years after mm -hmm. immense has obviously has stopped. But she had a hysterectomy 30 years ago. So she can still have symptoms depending on what the hormone levels are doing. Advice here would be obviously to go and see exactly what those hormones are doing and go and measure the levels on the estrogen therapy that she's on. She mentions Premarin, probably uh, the, one of the most common drugs that women are on to replace the estrogen that they've now obviously lost. And that obviously would depend on how much her body needs to measure whether she's experiencing sensitivities to having either too little or too much. Because if you have too much in your hormone replacement therapy, you could also have symptoms. Mm -hmm. And that's what the clinicians need to discuss with the patient as well. Okay. Let's talk about treatment options once you yes. discover that you are feeling the symptoms of the onset of menopause. What treatment options are there and what are we looking at in terms of pros and cons? 100%. So I think uh, firstly from a medicinal drug perspective, hormone replacement therapy or she mentioned Premarin for example is an estrogen formula. Estrogen is a collective term for three different hormones. Mm -hmm. Estrone, estradiol and estriol. So estriol. So remember that you, when you're replacing them you're replacing them to a certain degree uh, as well. But you need to know what your genetics are and what your family history is in mm -hmm. terms of certain cancers. Because certain cancers are very sensitive to estrogen supplementation. Oh, okay. So you, need, you could actually then, if you have the, the, those genes and if you have really strong breast cancer history, you need to be aware of that in terms of choosing which uh, hormone replacement therapy you go on. Also, there are natural ways of supp supplementing your, your, your hormone therapy with plant estrogens, which, which have a lot less side effects. Mm -hmm. So people need to be aware of their diet and look at amending diet to get, get in a lot of... And soy is actually one of the biggest sources of plant estrogens. Really? Wow. Very interesting. Um, okay, so we will be keeping yeah. our lines open. We are going to be returning for, to our conversation with Dr. Darren Green shortly. So 0214309881, get calling with your questions. It's my feel-good show. Well, we have so many questions coming through with regards to menopause. Our medical topic for today with Dr. Darren Green. Our lines are open. It's 021-430-9881. But Dr. Darren Green, I just wanted to ask you, when it comes to birth control, hmm. when do you stop using it? Because when do you know you're going into menopause? Good question. So you, you'd be looking at having effective contraception, not to have a lot lamaki, uh, basically in that time. But when you come off hormone therapy, then only can we measure what's happening in terms of the hormone. So you then move on to an alternate, uh, so, uh, you know, use of mm. contraception at that time, and then we could measure the hormone uh, levels uh, as such. So important to know that because you could obviously, uh, because you suddenly are not aware think that you're not pregnant anymore because of irregular periods. Irregular menses doesn't mean that you can't fall pregnant. The exact stage when that is impossible is, is basically dependent on the hormone-driven ovulatory process. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to demonstrate. So sonars can be done of your, of your uh, ovaries at certain times of the month correlating with the levels of the hormone, etc. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's take a quick call. Anonymous is on the line right now joining us from Durban, I believe. Good morning, Anonymous. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Thanks for the call. What's your question or comment? Um, doctor, I'd like to know how um, menopause affects women with endometriosis. I'm in stage four endometriosis, and um, I've had it since 2008. So I've been on the pill permanently, and um, I don't get my periods unless I need to have a bleed through every six months. Yes. But how does it affect women um, like me who, are, who do have this condition? 100%. So endometriosis, for those that don't know, is the presence of the uterus tissue so the inside the lining of the uterus, you have that tissue developing anywhere in the abdomen. So you can have the presence of uterine tissue developing on the liver, on the kidneys, okay. next to the bowel wall, for example. And under the influence of the normal cycle, the menstrual cycle, the hormones would cause then that uh, tissue, like you have in the uterus, to undergo the same changes because it's the same type of cells. And then it would swell up, obviously, and, and cause, obviously, swelling and pain and so forth. So just as you stop menstruating with a normal uterus in place, so too the effects of reduced, reduced estrogen on endometriosis normally actually help the endometriosis. But as I say, each, each profile is different, and the stage that you mentioned is stage 4. Often, uh, if, if it's big enough, the complex is in the abdomen and they cause too much pain, they're often removed surgically. Mm 
Okay. But it definitely is sensitive to the hormone profile as well. Yeah, I, it feels like we're running out of time, but I feel we do need to address this in terms of how society can be more understanding 100%. of women's health uh, health issues, uh, especially things like uh, like menopause. Yes, most definitely, including breastfeeding. Yeah, and thinking just of a, a woman wearing a uniform and being forced to wear a thick uniform during that period of time. There's just so much more empathy and compassion that can be shown by employ employers across the world of being understanding. By no means are you discriminating and making a special platform for women, but you're saying, I identify what you're going through and I will support you to, you know, to go through this. And I think it, it, it definitely is the way forward. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Green. Thank you. Yeah, and it's been a great chat, and I'm looking forward to next week's medical chat. And since it's Women's Month, yes. I'm pretty sure we're putting the spotlight on women's health this month.